Hi guys! So this is gonna hopefully be a quick tutorial on Clip Studio paintbrushes and how to edit them, especially now that you can finally download the sweet sweet Photoshop brushes to your Clip Studio paint, so I'm gonna show you how to actually utilize them. So here I have a basic brush, this is the most basic as it gets. I have turned on almost all of the uh, settings for this brush. Uh, the only way to make it even more basic is to go down to brush density and adjust brush density by gap. We can turn it off if you want that nice uh, Photoshop round brush feel. This is how you get it. Uh, we're gonna keep it turned on because it's important to what we're gonna do today. Uh, so here's the screwdriver. Here's all of your uh, basic settings. We're not gonna focus on those right now. Uh, what we are going to focus though instead is these three, which is brush size, opacity and brush density. Uh, and more specifically these, which is the extra settings, uh, because in Clip Studio Paint each slider has to have its own slider. Uh, in here the most important ones are the pen pressure and tilt. Uh, the pen pressure is pretty self-explanatory, you get pen pressure, wait did I turn it on? Uh, I did, but it was not zero. So there. Now you have a pen pressure. Uh, I personally like my uh, brush nice and round, so we're gonna keep it that way. And we're gonna skip the opacity and move to brush density for a moment. And uh, currently we have an issue where no matter how hard we press, the amount of color we get is the same and we don't like that. The brush density is kind of like another opacity, I don't really know the difference, but who cares. Um, so yeah, we, we want this to be affected by pen pressure, so we are gonna go and turn it on. So now when we press really hard, this is what we get, and when we press really light, this is what we get. Now the only issue is that despite the fact that I'm pressing really hard, uh, you can see that the colors overlap, I still don't get the amount of color that I want. When I press really hard, I want the uh, press pigment to be really, really uh, high, so what we're gonna go and do is turn on the tilt, which has absolutely nothing to do with actual tilt, by the way, and boom, you can see that it's automatically nice and pigmented. Now one thing to note though is that there's the second slider. Uh, this one doesn't always do anything, so uh, if your brush is lagging, it might be because uh, this is a 100 turned into zero because it literally makes zero difference, and you're good to go. Now we can go to the opacity and we can do the same here. We can turn on the pen pressure uh, for a nice natural gradient if that's how you like it. Um, the only issue with this one too is that I have to press really hard in order to get that high pigment and we don't want to do that. We want to be gentle with our tablets, you know, we don't want to, you know, press too hard. So we are going to turn on the tilt for the sensitivity. Now in here, uh, the second slider actually has a function. It's kind of like the opacity of the opacity. You can see the higher it is, the more color you get, the darker it is, or the lower it is, uh, it basically gets transparent. I also like it on the middle. I think it's a nice balance. Uh, so that's how I'm going to keep it. So these are the basic settings. So now we're going to go uh, to the basics of creating a texture brush by using the tips. So we're gonna go here in material, uh, we are gonna choose this for example, and boom, now we have a simple brush tip. Now the only issue though is that, let's say that you wanted to actually uh, be the same no matter which way you turn your pen, we can go to the angle and we can choose direction of the line and boom, now, now it follows you around like a good boy. Uh, so, you can also choose to have a random. Now the random is probably the most important setting when it comes to creating uh, custom texture brushes. As you can see, this is the result. The angle is now completely random. Uh, I utilize this a lot when creating uh, custom brushes. So now we can go uh, here to the stroke. Now, something important to note is that if your uh, brush is lagging, it might be because the gap is all the way down here. As you notice, uh, I'm not even drawing and it still keeps going. Uh, 
you can turn the gap all the way here. It's gonna look exactly the same, but it's gonna run a lot smoother. So you can uh, utilize that. Same with here, you can have pen pressure, you can have it on random. Uh, if we turn the gap all the way here and draw nice and equal, just like all of us. And if we turn it to random on the other hand, boom, this is what we get. We can also turn this off for a moment and go and choose another brush tip along this one and go back to the stroke. Now this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's all, uh, it's, they repeat uh, the same pattern. Let's say that you want to break this pattern and here you can go repeat method. I basically, again, utilize the random. You can choose uh, the ones that you refer, you prefer. Uh, now we can go back to the brush tip. You have thickness, angle, brush density, all of these things. I utilize this a lot when it comes to creating a custom brush. Um, let's say that I'm just gonna turn this on. So yeah, this is uh, the currently what I got. And we can go to brush tip. Let's say that we want to turn thickness to the random. And now it looks like this. We can also turn angle to the random. And we can choose how random we want to be. Let's just say that we want it to be little random. So boom, now it looks like this. Uh, we can also turn density to the random. If that's also what we are up to, we can choose how random we want it to be. And boom, now it looks like this. Uh, then we can go and let's just say... Let's go to the stroke and make the gap a little bit smaller. So we have, uh, so it looks like this. Now let's say that you don't want um, uh, the opacity, like you don't like the fact that these uh, kind of overlap. You want the shape to be uniform, more, more like uh, this one here. We can go and blend brush with darker. We can turn it on and this is what it, what it's going to look like. This is pretty much the basic basics of creating a brush, like any brush, really. Um, I utilize this a lot. You can have multiple brush tips, you can randomize anything, you can edit pretty much anything. Uh, you can add gaps, texture, you can reverse, whatever. Uh, this is, again, the basics of creating your own brush. Uh, the good thing about Clip Studio Paint is that you can customize absolutely everything, but this is also its greatest flaw, especially if you are a beginner to the program, you don't necessarily know what you're doing, it can leave you very frustrated. So I hope that this uh, hopefully explained the basics on how to get you started, especially if you're going to be using uh, Photoshop brushes on the program. So yeah, bye!